Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian, welcome back to Brandy Feed on the Show Sky channel. This is episode 5 of the Feud.js tutorial series, and in this video we'll be going over life cycle of instances in Vue. So on their website they have really good uh, a section about instance lifecycle hooks and they explain that each view instance goes through a series of initialization steps when it's created for example it needs to set up data observation compile the template mount the instance to the dom and update the dom when the data changes along the way it also runs functions called lifecycle hooks giving users the opportunity to add their own code at specific stages. So what this means is that at some points, for instance, whether it be creating the initial uh, element or updating it, destroying it, mounting it, uh, we can run specific code blocks at that point. And here they have a diagram about it. So you can see kind of how it uh, goes around but what we will be using for this tutorial is mounted which is um, called after the instance has been mounted and that means that it is added to the DOM and it will be visible to the user so what we will be making for this tutorial is a uh, comment view system kind of so there's this API JSON placeholder dot type code dot com and you can uh, get some awesome things from it. So this document has 500 comments inside of it and it's all nonsense information, but it's really useful to use this document to see how mounting works. And it is also a good example for using different components to display um, uh, each comment as their own thing. So I'm going to make a new file, which is going to be index.js. And that is going to be so it will be easier to write the code separately. I'm just going to say source index.js to just link the index.js file with the HTML. And this will just make it cleaner to write the code. So what we want to do is we want to say const app equals a new view we're going to say L equals hashtag app. And that is because we still have the div app right here. So next up, we want to, um, we want to uh, get the data out of the API. So what we can say is we can create a function mounted and we could do it like this, but writing it like this is a lot shorter and you see that being used a lot more in view because it's just a shorter way of writing it. So this just implies a function inside this object. So inside mounted, we want to use the fetch API that browsers have to fetch the data from the API. So I'm going to copy the API link. I'm going to paste it in. And then in next, we are going to get response and turn it into JSON. And then we want to say that uh, the data and then this dot comments equals the data. And we need to add a data object and we put our comments inside of it. So for now, it's just going to be an empty array. So what this does is it tries to render everything that's inside of this, uh, this view instance. And then when it's ready to be mounted, it mounts it. And then right after it fires this event. And then after it's added to the page, we are going to request the data. So we go to the page. We can see if we type app.comments we have 500 objects and each object has 
these properties. So we have a body, email ID, name and post ID. So what we can do now is we can create our components for the comments. So we're going to say view.component and it's going to be called comment. And we're going to provide it with an object. And then inside of here, we want to uh, register uh, some props. And before we always used an array of strings, but in this case, I want to make it an object. And this allows me to specify the types that I want the uh, properties to be. So in this case, we're going to have a post ID, which is going to be a number, an ID, which is going to be a number, a name, which is going to be a string, an email, which is going to be a string, and a body, which is going to be a string. And that is just the date that is inside of here. So body, email, ID, name, and post ID. Then underneath that, we want to make the template. And this template is going to be uh, multiple things. So it's going to have a header and a P tag. So we need to wrap it inside of a div so we can actually append it because the way we did it before with just one single element, it works. But if you add multiple elements in a template and they are not grouped inside of one big div or whatever, it won't work. So we're going to say div and the class equals comment. Then we close it. And then inside of this, we're going to put an h1 with name. And then a p tag with the body. And that is going to be the name is going to be from the props and the body as well. So this is going to be our template. And then if we go to the browser, we'll see that nothing has rendered yet. So what we can do now is we can put something inside of our app to load all the comments. So I'm going to say comments and then V4. So we're going to loop through each comment and we're going to create a four comment in comments and comments is inside of our data object so we can access it. So for each comment, we're going to V bind. And what we used to do, is we used to say V bind and then name equals whatever and that kind of stuff. But because we declared the props as an object, we don't have to do that. We can just provide comments and it will automatically put everything that we have here from here. So it's just a shorthand for writing it all out. So when we go back to the browser, we'll see that after a couple seconds, it will load. But this is really slow because we're making 500 different divs filled with 500 H1s and 500 P tags which is not really fast. So what we want to do is we want to create pages out of this. So each post has, or each comment has a post ID, and that is the post that it was made on. And I want to make it so we only display the post ID from a post we have entered. So post ID one, it will display all the posts from post ID one, two, all the posts from post ID two. So for that, we want to put an input on top and we're going to make it a number input so that we can input the numbers when the page is loaded. So we can say one, two, three, four, five. Now the first thing we need to do before we continue is we need to make sure that each element has an ID because that isn't the case yet. So inside of here, I'm going to see V bind key comment dot ID. And when we do that, we won't have a warning that we need to add a key. So what we want to do now is we want to make it so only the comments that are made on the post ID that I selected will display on our body. And to do that, we want to add a model to the input. 
and that is going to be current post ID. And then in our index.js, we are going to add a new data, which is going to be current post ID, and it's going to be one. When we reload the page, we'll see that one is now here. When you say app dot app dot current post ID, it'll be one. And then when we change it to seven, it'll show seven. But as a string, because this is actually a string input, but it will only work for numbers. So I have to do some checks before uh, we do anything else with it to make sure we use it as a number. So what we want to do now is we want to only display the comments that are from the current post ID. So to do that, we can use the uh, computed properties that we uh, talked about in the last video. And we are going to say display comments is going to be view view dot comments, which is going to get this array dot filter comments and each comment post ID should be equal to parse int of view dot current post ID. So this will this will filter out all the comments that are not equal to the current post ID. And display comments will be what we can use. So if we go here and say display comments, display comments, we'll see that there are five things inside of here. And if we go to post ID, it'd be one. Or you go to five then the first one will be five. So now we need to make sure that in our body, it will only display the uh, the elements that are inside display comments. And we can easily do this by changing for comment in comments to for comment in display comments. And then when we reload the page, we'll see that it is a lot faster. And now we can just change whatever is here and it will automatically update it because this is modeled to the current post ID. And whenever that changes, display comments changes. And then whenever display comments changes, it'll redo this comment layout and it'll change. So we can immediately see that we can go through all the comments right here. And it's basically like pagination where we have page one, page two, and it will only display the items that are on that one page. So now for a final thing, I want to add a bit of styling so it looks a tiny bit better. And each comment is a div with a class comment. So we can say dot comment, and each comment will be a background color of light gray. And when we go back, we will see that it'll show really nicely. So that is going to be it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode.